Hi, we're here in Marty's home gallery again. Last time we did an introduction and he was talking a little bit about some of his earlier influences. So we're going to do a two-part follow-up to those early influences. This is the first of those. He's going to be talking a bit about some of the influences he had when he was in college. Well, I'm glad that you came back for a second interview about a follow-up about what we talked about last time. You talked about being a kid in Sioux City and you went to a branch in the library and you were influenced by a lot of the work that was in there, but the work wasn't that complete. Um, you talked about, oh, they had a Da Vinci and some other master artists. But as you've gone through life now as a professional and as a fan of art, are there some people that have stood out as saying, this is one of your favorite, or this is someone who's influenced you a lot? I would have to say that one of the people that influenced me the most was um, Maurice Losansky, who was um, the, uh, he was the head of the printmaking department at the University of Iowa. Um, I had seen his work early on when I was in high school um, when a small exhibit of his um, large works came to the Art Center in Sioux City, Iowa. Um, I got a chance to see his work up close um, and see what they were all about. I wasn't really experienced in printmaking. I didn't know that much about it. What he taught was um, intaglio and etching and um, engraving. And um, he did a lot to revive those older processes and make them contemporary. What was in this exhibit that you liked? Um, the exhibit was um, portraits and self-portraits, um, as well as a number of, of works that were about the Amish that lived around um, the University of Iowa, Iowa City. And he would do, um, do figurative work, pretty large scale figurative works of um, some of the Amish people that, that lived in the area. Um, and so it was very, very immediate. It was very, um, it was about what was around him. Um, he also did portraits of his, of his family and his friends, um, which were, I guess would have to say it's all about about making art about what's in front of you. And that's really kind of one of the things that he pushed. So of the things you were looking at, what are some of the things that, that moved you the most of his work? Um, I like the intense color. Um, it Intaglio can move back and forth between being a lot of very dark, uh, a lot of very dark areas, um, but he used a lot of um, pretty intense color, um, and he created some new some new ways of of printing um, that hadn't been done before. He was printing. Um, etching and printing uh, plexiglass and cutting up the pieces and would, would um, actually drop those very basic shapes and colors into one of his prints. Um, and there are a number of them that I really, really enjoyed while looking at. Um, on the um, poster for the advertisement, for the University of Iowa um, in Iowa City, and I saw his work again. Um, and in both cases, they're pretty good sized pieces of work. Um, some of them lifestyle or almost life size. Um, and so I, I got a chance to see his work up close um, at a pretty early age. I had not seen, a, when I had seen his work, I had not been to the Art Institute in Chicago yet. I'd been to the Jocelyn, which was in Omaha, but I had not seen a lot of 
um, really expansive fine art. Um, there wasn't a lot of that in Sioux City where I grew up. So as a printmaker, and you were you were studying with him and with his work, I assume, has any of his work come to influence any of your work because you're a printmaker as well? Um, yeah, he had a I think he had a big impact on my work. Um, when I first I had not met him yet. Um, he was still teaching at the University of Iowa and he was teaching graduate classes and I was an undergraduate. Um, the first time I went to the University of Iowa and went into the, the art museum there, I got to see his Nazi drawings, which really blew me away. They were um, drawings that he had done um, over life size in a lot of cases that were about the size of uh, a three foot door. So they would have been three by three by eight feet. They were, they were big drawings. Um, and they were about people that he had known that had gone through the concentration camps. And when I went into, he actually had his own gallery. When I went into that gallery and saw those, those pieces, I was, I understood at that moment the power that art could have on, on those that are viewing it. Um, it was great at that period of time because the works were on sliding panels and you could actually look at um, one by one as you could pull them out. Um, I think there were about 23 of them all together and they were, they were horrific. I mean, they were not pieces of artwork that you want to put in your house, but they definitely impacted me as, um, as an artist because it gave me a sense of the power that art could have um, simply by portraying something, by portraying some experience or um, event um, imagined or otherwise. Um, So what was his influence on you after you left the university? Um, I would I'd have to say it was substantial. Um, after I left the University of Iowa, I moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, and became part of a, a group of artists um, that set up a co-op gallery. And while I was doing a number of different types of work, I continued to do portraits. Um, and they were, they turned out to be very important to me. Um, some of them were very loose drawings, um, a lot of movement, um, very, very quick. Um, and I've got a lot of those yet in my collection. Um, but also I was doing these, these, they were a combination of just figurative drawings and paintings and, um, a little bit more personal on the on the portraiture side, um, and those were people that I knew very well, um, and I was close to. Um, and one of those works that I remember the most was one that I did, um, actually two that I did of a friend of mine, Jeff, who I had done an earlier portrait of. Um, when he um, wasn't ill, um, at at when I was starting to work and do portrait work, that was the um, that's when the AIDS crisis was in full bore, and part of the reason why I was doing portraits was because I was afraid that I would lose. Um, that I was, I would lose these people, and I wouldn't have anything to remember them by, and so I wanted that portrait as a as a remembrance. Um, I had done one pretty close up portrait of um, of Jeff, and then later on, after he got sick, 
probably just, you know, weeks before he passed away, I'd asked him if I could do a portrait of him. And so he came into my studio and I photographed, um, I photographed him without his shirt on because he had a, um, a stent in his chest. I was able to, to, to photograph him and get ready to do the portrait, um, which I did end up doing. It was, it was a beautiful portrait. And, um, but while I was photographing and talking to him about, um, about just things in general, he looked at me and said, you, you realize that this body that you're photographing, that you want to do a, a, a piece of artwork about, is a prison for me. And that changed my perspective completely um, about the power that, um, that portraiture had. Um, but it also changed my perspective in that people and portraits aren't just about how they are physically. Um, and that impacted my work later on um, as I progressed. they're important and um, I think that they're some of my best work.